All right, YouTubers, welcome back. My name's Dave, like always, and you found Do Yourself, Do It Right. Well, as you can see, I got my Ford hat and shirt back on today, and uh, got the Mustang sitting behind me. And, uh, you know, today I'm going to go over, uh, you know, what I had to fix on the Mustang so I could get it up here to New York. It took me a couple tries, uh, you know, going to Georgia, realizing it was broke, coming back, going back to Georgia, having to fix it before I could get it up here. And uh, I'm going to go over what you guys should be looking out for and then how to fix it. So, uh, you know. Let's get into it. All right, so just so you fellas know that, uh, you know, this video only pertains to, uh, you know, the fellas that got the six speed manual transmission. Uh, and I believe it only pertains to the 2015 and up Mustangs. I believe the 14s have a different setup on the pedal, uh, you know, for the clutch master cylinder. But uh, yeah, so if you got one of those automatics or auto magics uh you know this video really doesn't pertain to you um but you can watch and you know pretend like you have a cool six speed and you know i know what you're thinking well my, my automatic's faster and blah 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 yeah whatever but it's still not a manual you still don't get the uh the, the feeling of shifting gears and you know anyways so uh so one of the things uh, a couple of things i want to go over uh, before I show you what I had to do to fix it was, uh, you know, the signs and the symptoms of the clutch master cylinder actually going bad. And of course, you know, I didn't pay attention to them when I was driving the car. Uh, many of you guys know that this car is really just a, you know, a Friday car, uh, a date night car, uh, you know, take it out every once in a while and enjoy it kind of car. Uh, I don't drive it a lot. It only has 25,000 miles on it now. I bought it with, I think, 22,000 uh, three years ago now, two years ago now. I think two years ago now. So as you can tell, I put a lot of miles on it. So, uh, you know, the signs and the symptoms of your clutch master cylinder going bad. And, you know, the first sign should be is, uh, or should, is, uh, your uh, your brake master cylinder needs fluid. Uh, you know, I was driving down the road, going to work one morning, and I get a little ding dong, ding dong, a little uh, warning, idiot light, basically. Uh, and it says, uh, you know, your, uh, your brake fluid is low. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. My brakes work fine. Uh, drove to work didn't think of it anything of it you know drove it some more and got the light again it would come on it would go on it would come on and go off come on go off so you know eventually i got under the hood and added some brake fluid like you know like the light said uh fast forward a couple months the car sits you know i move and uh, i go back down south you know and i'm tooling around i'm driving the car and i get the light again i'm like what the heck well how am i how am i losing brake fluid it doesn't make any sense and uh you know that was like the last day that i was driving the car it gave me the light so of course i did the right thing and i put the cover on it put it back to bed in the driveway for another couple of months and uh you know the next time i uh planned on driving a car was i i went to my training in dallas flew from dallas to savannah to pick up the car and drive 1100 miles here to new york and I get in the car and there is no clutch pedal whatsoever. It just went right straight to the floor. So that's, you know, your next sign, your next symptom is you got no clutch pedal or your clutch pedal is in and out. You know, like, uh, you know, sometimes you have a clutch pedal, sometimes you don't. And uh, well, you know, 
that was uh, that was the killer. Basically, I had to hurry up and buy another plane ticket and fly back to New York. Um, so, clutch master cylinder. Let me tell you that they are in pretty high demand. Actually, this is a a, a common failure point for these Mustangs. Uh, when I called the dealership, the dealership was like, "No, we ain't got one." So what I had to do was, uh, you know, I had to call around to a whole bunch of dealerships. I actually tried to, you know, get my hands on one while I was down there. And the closest one uh, was about six hour drive away in Florida. So these clutch master cylinders, you actually have to give them your VIN number on your Mustang. And the reason why is because Ford in their infinite wisdom, as much as I love Ford, they love changing parts mid-year. They love just switching them up for some stupid reason. So you gotta give them your VIN number and then they'll tell you which part number you have to order. And there is a very slight difference in these parts. Uh, looking around on the interwebs, searching around, uh, there's not very many videos on how to replace this clutch master cylinder. There's maybe one. And I watched that guy's video. He he actually did like six videos, like six two-minute videos. So, uh, anyways, he actually ordered the wrong part. And, and the, the part on the part that is different is where it attaches to the pedal. Uh, one attaches with just a little circle clip and it pops in. And, and, well, I have the little circle clip in my pocket, actually. It looks like that just a little clip slides in clicks in holds it his was like this weird little dome thing and it had a different kind of circle clip and it, you know it was it was a little a little bit different and then in his very last video he thought that the uh that the master cylinder the throw was a little bit shorter so you know before you tear into this and you're having an issue with your clutch uh make sure you order the correct clutch master cylinder first and uh you know now i'm gonna show you you know the pain because it was definitely a pain all right so i'm gonna show you basically the easiest part first and that's up under the hood and uh you know it's gonna be pretty hard to video a lot of this stuff uh, that's probably the reason why there's not a lot of videos on replacing this clutch master cylinder. Uh, a lot of tight quarters, a lot of, you know, you got to lay upside down and whatnot. And, uh, so under the hood, you have to get to the part on the firewall, the part of the clutch master cylinder that pops through the firewall. And basically it's the two hoses uh, that connect the clutch master cylinder to your brake uh, master cylinder. So, looking on the side of your car, your brake master cylinder is over here. And as you can see, here's your brake reservoir. Here's your power brake. This is your, uh, you know, your brake that goes through uh, the firewall. There's four nuts that you have to take off from inside, and I'll show you those in a minute. And then if you look way down inside of here, let me see if I can get some light. All right, see this tube right here, this black tube that comes up to here. And then if you follow it along down into there, that is your clutch master cylinder. That's the part that pops through the firewall. There's a, there's a small little foam seal that seals the engine bay uh, to that clutch master cylinder and underneath this tube here is a hard tube and if you look right here see this tube right here that one and you follow it along it goes up underneath this plastic tube so basically what you have to do is you have to take out take off the plastic tube first and then you have to disconnect the metal tube which you can see right there right underneath the plastic tube now that tube is held on with another one of these circle clips and you basically you just have to push 
each uh, each side of this circle clip and it just slips down and then that's what allows you to pull the uh, the tube off from uh, the clutch master cylinder it's uh, it just pops on that's all um, makes a good seal you don't have to worry about it uh, leaking or anything uh, and it's this is probably the easiest part if you think if you if you start this and you think this is hard then you should probably take your car to the dealership because it only gets harder from here all right so what i had to do um and what i would recommend you to do uh when you're attempting to do this job uh take your seat out it's uh pretty simple uh there is four uh number 50 torx bit bolts one under here i pop the cover back off there's one underneath that cover and then there's two covers in the back now also depending on your seat you will have electrical connectors mine is a power seat with air conditioning and all that other good stuff i had two electrical connectors underneath there that you have to disconnect uh, before you pull this seat out now the best way that i found to pull this seat out is is you basically fold it up fold your headrest down and then just turn it and then pick it out of the car um, the seat's not light it's pretty it's pretty dang heavy um, but that allows you to basically lay down in here to get up into here if not you are literally trying to lay in this little spot here with this it is it's not good let me tell you it's this it's not good you have to take your seat out for sure makes makes the job that much easier now you will be in and out rolling in rolling out you know it's you know i'm telling you if uh if you are not very mechanically inclined i would not recommend you trying to do this uh it's very frustrating it took me literally almost all day to do this job and i'm a helicopter mechanic you know i i like to think that i'm a good mechanic um and i got super frustrated i had to take breaks i had to go inside of course it was like 98 degrees and i'm working in a black car um, but it's very frustrating so let me uh let me get you in here let me turn my light on so you can see what you're dealing with okay so these are your pedals obviously so to get these pedals out because you have to take the whole pedal assembly the clutch and the brake you have to take this whole pedal assembly out to change that clutch master cylinder and it it's um it's uh it's something boy let me tell you uh it is not easy i literally had bruises on both of my arms so this is why i recommend you coming up in here and laying upside down and this is the reason i think why there's not very many videos on this job um so to get everything loose you can see pretty easy the four nuts that hold the brake um to the firewall there's one there's two and then up top there are two more it's just a square up there and then again on this side over here if i can get a video of it which i don't think i can but it is a square one two three four four nuts okay those are easy to get to uh, to get the um, brake pedal loose you see this plastic pin right here so this plastic pin has to come out to get your uh, 
your lever off from your pedal assembly. Now it's held in with like a pinch, uh, a pinch kind of mechanism thing. It's plastic. You see it up in there. Uh, you, you're gonna have to get like a flat, flat tip screwdriver and basically push the metal part out and then the plastic part that holds it in, that locks it in, the blue plastic part, uh, then that'll come out and your pedal will be loose. Okay, so I would also recommend when you buy the uh, clutch master cylinder, which is only like 34 bucks, it's a cheap part. It's uh, super cheap. I would also recommend buying one of those pins because if you break it, then your pedal's gonna be loose and you're not gonna be able to, uh, I mean, it'll go back in, but it's not gonna be, not gonna be safe because your, your brake pedal could come loose. So buy one of those also because you know you're gonna be frustrated and getting that pin out is also frustrating so just buy the pin that's only a couple more bucks buy a new one in case you break the plastic one and then you know you don't have to wait on parts again so those four nuts now that's not all there are also bolts that hold the pedal assembly to the firewall i don't know if you can see there's a bolt here i'm pointing at way back up in there you shouldn't see it now there's one there there's also um, there's one above that straight up from that bolt there's another bolt that goes in and then i don't know if i can get to it let me see if i can get the camera up in there there are also two more bolts all the way up. See that one there? I'm pointing at. And then there's one over here I'm pointing at. So one, two, three, four bolts, four nuts. That's how you get this brake and clutch assembly out of the car. Now, there are sensors there's wiring in here you can see this oh this one popped out we'll have to pop that one back in okay so there's wiring in here that you have to disconnect now let me see this guy here you have to disconnect that one you have to disconnect this one um this these wirings the the wiring just pu uh, pushes in with these little uh um, well, let me pull this one out with these guys here they just push in make sure uh, when you put it back together they're not in the way and you also have these um, these switches on both your brake and on your clutch now that's what allows you to start the car you know it says you gotta push the brake in you gotta push the clutch in these are the sensors this is the clutch switch here. You can see it's a little plastic switch. That's gotta be pushed in. And uh, I'm gonna go over this a little bit more in depth when I get out of the car. Uh, I had an issue when I put mine back together. And if you see these little plastic pads, this one here, and then this one up in here, I had an issue with my brake pedal touching this switch far enough to let everything engage. So I had to, I had to basically jimmy rig this for the time being. Um, but yeah, that's how this clutch master cylinder comes out. Now that clutch master cylinder is uh, attached to the pedal assembly, and it's really hard to uh, to get it on a video. I wish I would have saved the old part for this video, but unfortunately I threw it in the trash. I was that mad at it. So anyways, um, it it's literally takes 15 seconds to pull that part off the pedal, put it back on the pedal, and then you're right back in here fishing those pedals up in there. All right, just so you guys know that 
Um, the way I knew my clutch master cylinder was out other than uh, it not working, having no clutch pedal at all and no resistance on the clutch pedal was when I crawled up underneath here, my master cylinder was actually seeping or leaking uh, brake fluid. And you can see, um, I can get up in there. You can see the end of the clutch master cylinder and the seal. This is your clutch master cylinder right here. The way I knew mine was bad was, well, there was drips of brake fluid on my finger. This whole thing was wet, it was dripping. So I knew that that was the problem in mine. You can see that, get up. You can see it a little bit better now. This little plastic end is what I was telling you about. It just held in there with a little circle clip. You actually take this off and replace it when this pedal is out. There's absolutely no way that you can do this without removing the pedal assembly. So what I found the most uh, annoying and frustrating part was getting the pedals out and back in. Not the fact that the bolts are hard to reach and the nuts are a little bit difficult to reach. It's actually fishing this whole pedal assembly out. Um, you know, there's a lot of wiring. It's a weird shape. You know, you get caught on a lot of stuff. Uh, one of the things, a little tip that I would like to, uh, you know, pass forward to you guys that are going to do this yourself. Uh, I showed you that you have to, gotta, you got to take off the brake. So those, those four nuts, you see that it's actually on studs. Those studs come through the firewall, through your pedal assembly. And those studs are attached to the brake booster. And the brake booster is out here. And what I mean, you don't know what I'm talking about, the brake booster, that's this big round guy here. That's your brake booster. So when you take those four nuts off, this brake booster then becomes loose in here. Like you can move it around. And what I did was I took the brake booster because, you know, I only have two hands. I'm only one person. I took the brake booster and I pulled it as far as into the engine bay as I could. This whole thing will move. I pulled it as far as I could, and then I took zip ties, and I zip tied it around the reservoir and my brace, my strut brace, to hold that booster as far forward as it could go to get those studs that are inside out of that pedal assembly. And if you don't do that, there is absolutely no way you can get that pedal assembly out unless you have somebody out here, you know, a second person holding that brake booster as far forward. I didn't have that, so I had to use zip ties and, you know, it worked. I pulled it, zip tied it, I pulled it, I zip tied it. I had probably six zip ties going around it just to hold it because I didn't want it to, to, loosen or break and then slide back in there while i'm trying to get those pedals in i'm telling you folks this job is not easy very frustrating probably the most frustrating job that i've had to do on a vehicle in a long time uh, there's just not a lot of space uh, there's no way to get comfortable it's just, you know, such tight quarters. And of course, I was on a time crunch. So if you, if your Mustang is like this one, and uh, you know, you have a couple of days to do it, or a week, or whatever, uh, you know, take your time and do it. Um, but I was on a time crunch. I was, I had to get it fixed so I could drive the car back up here in New York. 
So once I got everything back together, the pedals back in, the booster back in, everything hooked up, um, what I thought was gonna be another issue actually turned out to be not an issue at all. And that's bleeding the clutch. It's a self bleeder. You just pump the pedal. That's all you have to do. You just pump the pedal over and over and over. And eventually it, it builds pressure and it works the way it's supposed to. Um, so that's what I did. I just kept pumping it, kept pumping it, kept pumping it. And then finally it, it built pressure. Now, um, I will say that when you let it sit, uh, or when I let it sit after I had changed it, uh, you know, you gotta, you know, it's gotta work all the air out of the system. It takes a little bit, it takes, uh, you know, a couple days actually. I felt the clutch was a little soft the one day and I kept pumping it, kept pumping it. And, uh, it, you know, it's good, it's good now. It's, you know, it's a self bleeder. It's gotta get all that air out of the system. All right, so once I thought I had it fixed, uh, you know, I did what you're supposed to do and take the car for a test drive. And I'm super glad that I did because I had an issue. Um, my issue was I would, it would take off, the car would go, um, but then it would die. Like you, like it would just have nothing. Like it would just die. And then it would come back to life and then it would die. And then it come back to life and then it would die. Um, like a like a really hard hesitation and you know being that i didn't drive the car a lot i was like oh man what else is going wrong with this car i didn't think that it was pedal related until of course i got online i was reading a whole bunch of different stuff and uh there was one thing that said that the car needs to be relearned because i disconnected the electrical connectors and i'm like oh shit. and today of course it's saturday so I hurried up and tried to find a garage. Needless to say, I basically got scammed out of a hundred bucks to put my car on a diagnostic machine that didn't fix the problem and doesn't need to be done. So that whole, your car needs to relearn stuff because you took connectors loose, I don't think it's true. Um, Cause mine really was just, you know, stuff was reset, but that was it. And it cost me $100 for really nothing because he didn't fix the car. Uh, that was a garage in Savannah, by the way. And I really probably should name drop and feel that I got scammed, but I'm not going to. But he is on uh, oh, Ogeechee Road, close to the U-Haul dealership. If you really want to look him up, if you're in Savannah, don't go there. Um, the guy seemed nice, but I think he was just trying to scam me. And he got 100 bucks from me, so I guess he was successful and this is another reason why i hate going to garages and i hate relying on other people to try and fix my vehicles and that's why i try to do it myself the whole reason behind my channel is because of garages like that um so anyways didn't fix the problem i went back home i'm looking and you know i should have known that there's a saying that i usually go by and it is you know you should always look at the last place that you played meaning that the last place that i was working on this vehicle was the pedals obviously and so i thought that there should be you know there there was an issue with the pedals so um after driving the car to savannah and back i noticed some things the the uh, the tail lights would stay on when i shot the car off uh the cruise control didn't work the hill start assist where the car holds the brake until you get ready to go on the hill when it's at a certain angle um, it wasn't working either it was giving me the little uh, you know not functioning whatever on the dash so all of that leads to the brake pedal right so uh, you can't put your car in cruise control if you're touching the brake or if your brakes think that the brakes are on uh, you can't use the hill start if the brakes are on and of course the lights won't go out if the car thinks you're pushing the brake pedal so back underneath the dash we go and I want to show you what I was telling you earlier these switches up underneath here 
have these little plastic um, pads. I don't know if you can see it real quick. Like, I'm gonna climb under. <clears throat> so here's your brake switch, right? If the brake pedal is pushed in a little bit, like it is now, see that? The switch, this blue switch, is a two position switch. The first position, right there, and then the second position when it goes all the way out. Now I've been pushing on a pedal so I can't get it to go all the way out. This switch is two position. And that's what allows you to turn your cruise control on and your hill start and your brake lights go out. So if you look, you can see the end of this little rubber pad right there. I can get a better view of this one over here. It's the same pad. Basically, it's just a little piece of rubber that the switch comes up and hits against and pushes the switch in. Now, I did find the one and only video on YouTube. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. You can see how I've Jimmy rigged it. Um, that tells you that these pads will disintegrate or they'll get a divot in the pad now when I say disintegrate the end will come off this rubber pad will disintegrate it'll just fall apart mine was there so I didn't think that there was an issue and mine was hitting the switch so I didn't think that there was an issue until I took the switch back out and I started messing with the two position part of the switch didn't realize that it was a two position switch. It was a, it's touching now, it's doing something, it's touching some more, it's doing something else. So what I did was I basically just jimmy rigged it. I took a piece of plastic and I taped it to that, to where the, the, uh, the switch, you can't, I wish I could get it in there better. The switch now hits, hits it and it pushes the switch in further. Um, yeah, so mine was not disintegrated, but the pad definitely had a divot in the pad, which allowed the switch to not get pushed all the way, and which was giving me all of those issues. Now, you know, that's, that's some, uh, you know, if I didn't find that one video online i would have probably driven this car 1100 miles without cruise control having to feather the throttle every couple of seconds uh to get it to go 65 70 miles an hour and that would not have been fun so i'm really glad that that gentleman had that video showing what you know what that switch does if it's not all the way depressed and you can better believe I went on there and I said, wow, you, you saved, you know, you saved me a lot of trouble. Your video was spot on. You know, it fixed my issue. So shout out to that guy. I wish I remembered uh, his YouTube, that video. Um, I'll go back and find it and put a link to it in the description below so you guys can check it out. You know, it's one of only a, a few videos on these pedals and the switches and you know, it's just, like I said, like I've said over and over already in this video, this is not, this is not an easy job. It's not fun to get to. So if you're going to do it, you know, God bless you. Uh, it's, uh, it's doable. You can do it. I did it. Other people have done it. it, but it is, it is very frustrating. All right. So now a bit of good news and something that I did while I was down here I figured why not I was down here you know I didn't like the way the clutch felt while you're driving it felt very hard and once you got to a certain part of the clutch it would just fall in it would be really 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 hard and then boom it was super easy so of course you know I went on CJ pony parts like I always do and I bought a new clutch spring this is the old one uh, the clutch spring that I bought came with a new perch. 
these come these come apart obviously you know the that's just the spring you can buy just the spring and replace just the spring but i noticed on mine the clutch perch was broken it was it was up in there it was working but you know i bought the whole assembly which only made it like 20 more dollars so it's a it's a 35 pound clutch uh spring made by Steeda. uh i got it from cj pony parts and it makes the clutch feel so much better it's an even push all the way through the pedal it's not a hard 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 and then it gets easy it's a nice even 35 it feels like 35 it might get a little bit easier the closer you get to the floor um but it is it does make it it does make the clutch feel that much better um of course i don't drive it any faster or, you know get any kind of performance benefits out of it but uh i believe the whole thing was 109 dollars um but it does it does make it uh, it does make it feel much much smoother a little easier to drive it's not so herky jerky so that's definitely something that uh you know if you have like i said one of these six speeds you should probably uh invest in it and it's super easy it just literally just pops up on there um they actually recommend it i'll show you where it goes back up underneath here and you can see it right there that spring see that clutch spring it's uh you know it just pops on there and uh you know it's uh it's much easier to get in uh than the uh original one because the, the the spring is not as springy like i said it's only 35 pounds you can just push it up in there with your hand uh you know not that difficult to do and uh you know if you're just doing that you know go ahead man you have that done and maybe 10 minutes tops you know that's super easy the the actual hardest part is getting the old the old one out um because that that spring is that spring's tough uh, you know it's it it you know it helps the spring clutch spring assist i believe is the uh is the technical term for it all right guys so you know that's it that's uh that's changing out a clutch master cylinder on a uh, 2016 mine's a 16 but it also pertains to a 15 through 22 i believe they're still the same um that, that's you know that's how you got to change out the clutch master cylinder uh if you guys have found this video and uh you know you need help just go ahead and hit me up you know my email is in my in the description below diydaveb at gmail.com uh you know this is one of those things that you know we all gotta you know we gotta get together and help each other out because that is not an easy video it's not an easy video to make and it's not an easy task to get done by yourself uh, if you need some guidance some advice uh some talking down off a ledge when you want to drive your car off from it because it's so fucking frustrating and i shouldn't have used the f word but if it's uh you know if, if you're there you know hit me up put a comment in the block below you know i will respond because the you know i well i respond to everybody's comments that are you know normal comments and not ridiculous but uh you know sure if uh you know you guys got questions go ahead and hit me up uh it's tough and uh you know i uh you know i feel for everybody that has this issue that has to tackle it because it, it was definitely not easy um so think that's going to do it for this video you know like you guys do at the end of all my videos like tag share follow subscribe hit that notification bell when you, when you want to know when i drop new videos which is every thursday at 6 p.m and you know like always till next time thanks a lot got it in it's gonna be going in you don't know what it is check out my other video where I tell you what I ordered and why <laughs> <laughs>